All right, today we're working on the partition. In particular with this design, we have the L couch. And with the L couch in here, you have to climb over to get to the front. And we did that because that way we can have the batteries and storage. And also then the bed will lift down over top of that. But I also like a partition. We like the partition because it gives us extra privacy when we're parked, a little bit of security, um, but in particular privacy. Also for the heat and air conditioning. The air conditioning in particular in a warm area, it's tough to fight against the windows. Now you have covers that you can put up and down, but that takes time every time to get in and out of the van. With the partition, we can close it and keep this area cool with the air conditioner here. The front then, if it heats up a little bit, won't matter as much. So that's what I'm working on today is starting the partition, designing it, and figuring out what we're gonna do about that. I'll show you where here where it goes. You can see here, there's this area along here, and that's where the partition's gonna go. We're gonna leave a non-movable side behind the driver's seat here. It'll come over about here. I'm gonna do this out of three panels. If we did it out of two, because it would come to the middle of the van there, it would be difficult to cross from the front to the back. But if I leave three 20 inch sections along here, we can then slide two over and leave just the spot behind the driver's seat as what is covered. I've measured the maximum height I can put this and actually get the width that I need because we want this seat to be able to go back. So the passenger seat here, we want that to be able to tilt back still. So we have to have this part of the wall actually not covered. So to keep that in mind, when we go up here, I can make it about 53 inches tall, between 52 and 53 inches tall to get a nice opening then big enough for what we need and tall enough that it, we can cross over the couch obviously to get to the front so that's what we calculated now we'll go in the shop we'll show you what we're making out of this is an extruded aluminum project again this time we're making it out of black anodized instead and i ordered then with finished sides on it so that way the outside edge will be finished it's not going to be open because there's gonna be nothing mounted on the outside edge. The top and bottom will have some things mounted so we still need the groove for the wheel. And then in the middle, we're gonna use then quarter inch plastic, just an ABS plastic to then make the panel. The stationary panel will be, again, the black extruded aluminum, but we will mount a front panel and a back panel to that so we can insulate it since it doesn't move the weight doesn't matter as much. These panels with just the plastic insert are very light, should roll nice and easily. All right, I have one of the panels built. This is the panel that I built. And you can see extruded aluminum with the one flat side here and here to finish it. The panel then on the insert here. We then added small wheels. They actually fit right into the groove of the extruded aluminum. Those wheels then will run on a track. They make different types of track for doors like this. You usually see these doors in closets and, and uh, so forth. They make different types of track. Some of them are concave where the wheel will roll into the track or there's actually just a glider, to sl a plastic glider that it will slide through. Those tend to bind a little bit so it's not my favorite way to do something like that. Also the problem with the track is the things can drop in there. Because we're gonna be crossing from the front of the van passenger compartment into the back. Um, I don't want to be dropping things in there and get something that might stop the wheel. So we have actually the track then comes up in the air. The wheel itself is concave to roll on that. I'm also going to use then what would be normally for like a pocket door on the top and a track. It could hang from just that, but then I'm worried it will then want to move around some. So I'm gonna use both the track on the bottom and the track on the top. So it has nice smooth movement and it's less likely for it to become off the track or offset as we drive down the road or as we wanna move it. But that's the idea, that's what we've got. The construction for this will be very similar to what we've used multiple times. I ordered these pre-cut and tapped because I knew the sizes that I want it's not that much more expensive to have the manufacturer cut and tap these. I ordered these through T-Nuts in particular. And again, it's just not that much more expensive to have them cut to the exact length and then tap the way we need them. It does save me a little bit of time and for the, for the little bit of extra cost, 
it's worth it. It's also less on shipping to order it in smaller pieces. So if you do happen to know what size you're going to order, sometimes it's nice to do it that way. Again, because this is tapped here, we will drill through here and then countersink this side here. We will drill through here, countersink this side, so the, the flat cap screw will go through here to capture these. Obviously the panel we put in the middle. I'm also going to tap this one. This has not been tapped from the factory, but I'm going to tap this one. I wanted to wait till after I drilled this hole so I don't mess those threads up. Normally we don't tap that way because of the fact once you drill through here and put a bolt through, you can't put much of a bolt down this way. But in this case, because this is where we're going to mount where, where the track hangs from and also the wheel on the bottom, it uses only a half inch cap screw, that can be threaded into there. There's enough room to add that as long as you use a lock washer on it. It'll hold that nicely to hold on, again, the track for hanging it and then also the wheel on the bottom. I'll show you as we put it together. To center this hole, use the jig that I've made. This lines up and then we'll line up. This lines up then, lines up perfectly then for the crossbar. I've made it to where we can do two holes for the one by two, or obviously just use the first one. Use two holes for the one by two, or just use the first one if you're gonna do just a 10 series one by one. And then you can drill the hole. See here, we've got that. And it puts the hole nicely right where it should be. Then we use a step bit here, which we've seen before. This actually we'll use then on the other side here to drill in to be able to countersink then the flat cap screw into that. I'm also going to tap this in while we're here right now. So that way we can again put a short cap screw into that. And then here's how that goes together. With that counter sunk in there, if it's flush, again with the jig, if these normally cut out and come out pretty square the way that they should. Now I have this tapped here, so again I can mount the wheel, which actually rides in this groove, so it sticks out about a half inch. So I cut out the piece of plastic here. Again, this is just a quarter inch uh, plastic. You can buy, we bought this, happened to buy this at Menards. And then I just cut it with a skill saw. And now we'll put it in. Basically, if you cut it the right size, it just slides right in. Pretty slick. And then bring this over slides right in and this will then capture it and bolt together right there. Here's the wheel. This is a wheel that normally you would see again for a closet that you would put on a closet door like a mirrored door and fit in the groove there. It's actually this is not quarter inch. Drill it out a little bit and then quarter inch. Put it right in there. All right, now the wheels are mounted. You can see I'm using a button head cap screw here and a lock washer, which keeps it only into the aluminum a little bit here, which avoids then this bolt here. I'm not putting something on this side because really this should be strong enough to keep this in place since the wheel's actually in the groove. It's only gonna roll on it. There shouldn't be that much torque on it. The weight just is pressing down, so we just need to keep the wheel in place there. So I think that'll be enough. If it's not, I will then go ahead and use a self-tapping screw into this side. You just have to be careful that it doesn't penetrate all the way through because you'll hit the plastic. I have the track now screwed down. That's the bottom track. And you can see the way that goes together and it screws then into the floor. And the wheels on the bottom then allow it to roll across there. And I put a groove in it here where the screw is so the, it will hopefully hold that in place where it needs to be. And then you can see the upper track here. This is what we're working on mounting now. But we have to level it out this direction so we know where to put it. So we're gonna use the smart level. I'm gonna level that out here on the frame. And then 
put it here so we can get then the 90 and know exactly where to mount the tracks up here. And then you can see the tracks go all the way across. Same thing will mount over here. And that's what we're working on now. For the smart level hill, we just put it and we'll level it out and then we zero it. And then Christine will come over here. Now that we have that, this is what we're gonna mount then to the ceiling across so we can mount the rail to that. And then we have something to add on for the panel that closes the rest of it off. Now we're gonna mount the bracket. We just make the bracket out of a little aluminum L angle and then cut it down to the size of the bracket itself or the plywood we're gonna use. Mount drill mounting holes. And then we put a hole now up in the side up here where that's gonna mount, and we're gonna use a plus nut for that. And then we just put POR15 on it, so that way it's protected. We're gonna use a plus nut in there, and that's what we're gonna insert now. Because that's not holding a lot of weight, I would assume that we would just be fine with riv nuts, but the plus nut does hold a little more weight and is a little stronger, so we're gonna use that in this case. This we use quite often on the car to put in riv nuts. We use those often on the race car. And this is what we're gonna use. I haven't used it for plus nut yet, so hopefully it'll work just as easily. Plus nuts are a little longer. This seems to have enough stroke to do that. We'll know here in a moment. All right, worked just fine. Now I'm gonna put the bracket up on here, and then I'm gonna use the smart level again to level out this bracket, so that way when we mount across there, the bracket is level so it travels smoothly. Throw that on the floor and then put it up here until that's level. Now we'll drill the next hole and finish mounting the bracket. All right, we've got these up, the two panels. Obviously the header and the stationary panel are not done, but you can see they slide in place nicely. We will end up putting a solid panel on the end here. This will take one big solid panel and then another small panel will fill in there to close this off so we can stop the light from seeping through. We'll put a piece on the other side of this one here to capture this one so when we close it, it will automatically close this one. And then same thing, when we open it, it'll hit back here and it will open it up all the way. Like so, and it'll stay just like that. So it seems to be working so far. Now we have to build the stationary panel and then the fill-in panels top and bottom. Now I'm working on the stationary panel. It's similar in construction to the other ones except this panel is not inserted into the groove like it is on the ones that move. The ones here that slide we put the panel inside the groove. This is mounted on the other side. I did that because I want to put insulation in here and on this side here we are going to put a wall so it'll be solid so we can lean on it. We're also mounting it by bolting it through the plywood there again so it is solid we can lean on it. Up top here we will put a something in here to cover to fill this in. This will be wood all the way across. It'll come down far enough to then cover that track there so this has to sit below, so I have to come up with a way to mount this here. I'm gonna build a bracket to fill that in and mount that at the top, so again, it's sturdy. The stationary panel is in now. I bolted it to the bench seat here through the bottom, so this is now very sturdy, which means once we get the face on it, we'll be able to lean on it. I've also then added a brace up here which is the brace I was working on. You can see it's just a piece of steel that I folded and then cut to fit. 
painted it black. Although it won't be seen, that's just mainly for rust control because we will have up through here a panel, block off panel that'll go all the way across there to hide the mechanism for the sliding door. So that's it for now. I'm gonna insulate this part, but the finish work we're not gonna do till later just because we're not ready to start with the block off panels or any of the wood that we're gonna put in here. And then I also have not connected these two together, but eventually they will be connected so when the outer one shuts, the inner one will shut also. And with the magic of video now, it has been some time, we've got some things done, but I want to do a little finish up on the divider. We added then this piece of barn wood here to the top, and then these little LED lights here that we're going to use for reading lights, night lights, when the other lights are off when we get up into bed. They have a USB charger on the bottom of them. Some changes we did on the doors. When we made the doors here, the tracks now work, and they're connected together. I just added a little small panel to catch this one. But when we drove down the road, because these were just inserted in here, they vibrated a ton. So on the other side here, I put a bead of silicon, and that's got rid of that vibration. We also mounted a little light here. I don't have it on because it hurts the video. Also mounted a little light there, so we have some extra inside light there. But... This has come up very nice. It opens and closes well. We put the block off panel on the other side there. So this actually now makes a little shelf here. Once we have the ceiling comes down, we'll still have a little shelf here. So again, when we're in bed, we'll be able to charge off the USB here and lay our phones or things up there. So that's the finish to the divider doors. It actually came out very nice. It works very well, operates smoothly. We haven't decided if we're going to do any insulation on these panels yet, and the wood part here is not done, but we won't finish that until we're ready to finish more inside.